Okay, I'll, I'll ask a question. Uh, Tim Nelson, State Department. Uh, curious, curious question on uh, media funding um, uh, for propaganda purposes uh, in Russia. The importance of it um, is that uh, most of it is being funded by Western businesses uh, through through advertising. It's the larger market. Um, is there any role uh, that you can see in defunding uh, the major uh, Russian propaganda sources? Can you give example? Um, I would say probably 60 to 80 percent of, of funding is Western businesses coming into Russia uh, to fund uh, uh, any of the major propaganda channels. Um, well, I, you know, this is actually, as I said initially, uh, it, it's a difficult question. It's a good question, actually. I'm not quite sure, actually, of, of the data that you reference, whether that's indeed the case. And I think, actually, there is substantial local indigenous advertising markets in Russia, to, to the extent that I know. Uh, but, but assuming that that is indeed correct, actually, it's, it's very challenging, actually, because, as, as Jill said, actually, Russia sometimes uses the tools that, you know, we routinely employ here for business development purposes, for growth, the, the, the essential tools of capitalism to distort the very nature of media. And so it, it's a challenge. Um, I will add my few words. Um, you know, when we are trying to campaign, you know, to stop these Russian trolls and the Russian presence, we had a very, very big uh, troubles with administrations of um, social networks. Um, uh, managed from Russia, because Twitter, Facebook, of course, contacts, Instagram, they have their offices, usually controlled, usually based in Moscow, and any tries, for example, to unblock activists from Ukraine, uh, they were unsuccessful, because Moscow offices, even of Facebook or Google, very often they supported uh, pro-Russian activists and pro-Russian, let's say, propaganda there. Okay. Dean, I would just jump in briefly because that's been a big debate for quite a long time. And I think one of the problems is the technology and the way the media work right now makes it extremely difficult to figure this out. I've been at so many different conferences where that question is asked, what does the West do? What does the United yep. States do to answer? And usually it falls into old think of, um, you know, should we give more money to VOA? Should we give more money to RFERL? How do we, should we answer them? Should we, usually they don't say lie, but the, it's usually put out as they can lie, we can't, therefore we're at a disadvantage. And I don't think right now there's really creative, I'm intrigued by some of the things that both the other guests are talking about in terms of you know, looking at the media landscape the way it is, not the way it was, you know, 25 years ago, or even 30 years ago, and uh, and trying to figure out different ways of getting um, citizens educated to consume. I, I do keep going back to that. People are not, they're, they're not cut off anymore. If you're in Moscow or you're in any of these countries, you're probably able to get almost all the information you want. It's a question of there's too much information. Yep. So, and you're buried in it. And then there's disinformation, as we've been saying. And then there are wacky conspiracy theories. And I know I did a study in the Baltics in Estonia um, with a, a co-researcher. And we looked at precisely that, the influence of Russian media yeah. on Russian-speaking Estonians. And so many of them, especially the 17-year-olds, said, um, I said, who do, you, who do you read? How do you get your information? Most of them were getting it from the web. And then my second question, of course, was, who do you believe? And usually the answer was, we don't really believe anyone no. because everybody lies. The West lies, the Estonian government lies, the Russians lie. And this one young person said, I call, when I try to figure out what's happening in Ukraine, I call my grandmother who lives in Ukraine. I'm serious, you know, so um, this, is, this is one of the problems. There is a great um, lack of belief in the media, and also because people are so inundated with information, they throw up their hands and say, I can't handle it, it's too much, I'm tuning out. And that is very useful to Russian propaganda, because the, the citizens who are um, disenfranchised or encouraged just to kind of tune out, 
it, that works in their favor as well. Thanks. Um, we can spend an entire day talking about the walls of the U.S. policy for promoting independent media and the pressures facing the U.S. budgets. But, but clearly it's associated with a shrinkage of the budgets that typically fund good governance, democracy promotion, including media. So this has been a downward trend for a number of years. Uh, and it's a worsened trend. And it actually sort of points to the fact that we can't just look at short-term security risks and fund their solutions. It's time that we actually take a look at these long-term issues, including media and critical information flows. And you can't really exit the playing field when it comes to these issues. You have to stay engaged, and you have to remain there as a player. There is some interesting legislation right now on the Hill, actually, and I think it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. It's by Senator Rob Portman of Ohio and Senator Chris Murphy. They have proposed, actually, establishment of a whole-of-government approach associated with the center and some funding that should promote independent media, should focus on investigative journalists and the efforts to counter propaganda and disinformation. So it's a good step in the right direction. There isn't a lot of funding associated with that, but if it happens, it's going to be something positive. And maybe one step that starts changing the tide of this absence of funding and attention. Actually, we are out of time. I'm so sorry. Uh, maybe final remarks of our participant, JK. Maybe, I mean, I just wanted to add one more thing about the uh, citizen engagement that I think when we talk about uh, online media, um, there is also this trend, especially among young people in the region, that not, not just that they are disengaged because there is just so much information, but that they are disengaged because they think that the truth will just emanate from the internet. And so they don't really have, a, have an understanding that they will also have to have a stake in it because those owners, although the barriers for entering the market are surely lower, but those owners will have to take political risks. And if they want to do investigative pieces, they need money and and they need, yeah, so there's an engagement. Thank you. Alex, Jill, do you want to say something? Okay, so. No, thank you for your attention and the great questions. This is an important discussion to all of us, clearly, so thank you for being part of this. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we have a break now.